In this video, we'll discuss properties of determinants. So before we've learned how to do row operations, and we've been doing them a lot. So when we're trying to find determinants of matrices and we perform these row operations, the row operations actually do affect what the determinant is. However, if we know what the effect of each row operation does in the determinant, then we can take these really complicated matrices and reduce them to something simple. And then keeping track of what we've done, we're able to determine the determinant of a much simpler matrix. So here are the three operations you can do, and here's how it affects the determinant. So if we take a row i in, determinant, in a matrix A, and we take that row i and we add a multiple of another row to it. So this would be our new matrix B. Then we say that the determinants of the two are equal. So I'm going to use two by two examples to demonstrate this. So before I had one, two, zero, three. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add two of the third row to the first row. So now we'll get one, eight, zero, three. So the determinant of the first matrix is going to be one times three minus two times zero, so that's three. And then the second one, it's going to be one times three minus eight times zero, which is also three. So an example there showing that they're the same. Of course, this isn't a proof that they're the same. This is just an example. Okay, what if we switch rows? So if we switch rows, then the determinant of the second matrix B is going to be the negative determinant of the first matrix. So uh, this makes sense in this example. So if we have, say, uh, 1, 2, 2, 1, well, this determinant is going to be 1 minus 4. So we're going to get negative 3. But if we flip the rows, so we get 2, 1, 1, 2 now, here we're going to get 2 times 2, which is 4, minus 1, which is 3. So it becomes negative. Okay, what if we take a row and we scale it? Well, let's say, for instance, our matrix A is going to be 1, 3, 2, 2. Okay, so this is our matrix A. And in matrix B, we're going to scale the third row, or sorry, the second row by three. So here we're going to have one, three, six, six. So in this case, I should mention that this is going to be our matrix B. So what's the determinant of the first matrix A? This is going to be one times two, that's two, minus two times three. It's going to be negative four. But in our second case here, we're going to have 1 times 6, which is 6, minus 3 times 6, which is negative 12. So we took our mat matrix A, whose determinant is negative 4. We multiplied a row by it by 3. So the determinant of B is, of course, the determinant of A, which is negative 4, times 3, because we multiplied a row by 3. So then that's how we get our negative 12. So when we do operations, we have to keep these in mind. So I have an example for this. So we're going to find the determinant of this matrix, and we're going to do some matrix operations. Okay, so first, let's do the replacement, so the first one. So we're going to take a row, and we're going to add a multiple of another row to it. And this will leave it the same. So we have 1, 5, negative 3. I want to get rid of this 3 and this 2. So we're going to subtract three of the first row from the second row. So we're gonna get zero, negative 18, and then 12. And then from the third row, we're going to subtract two of the first row. So we're gonna get zero, three, and negative one. Okay, so at this point, there's no change in determinant. Now I'm gonna do something a little helpful. I wanna divide the second row by six. So I want to divide this row by six. So remember here, the determinant of B is equal to C times the determinant of A. So if I multiply this row by one over six, then the determinant of B is equal to one sixth times the determinant of A. Okay, so one sixth that A is equal to that B, which means that six times the determinant of B is equal to the determinant of A. So we have to pull this six out here. Okay, so why not one sixth? 
Well, if it was 1 sixth, we're already making this smaller, which means our determinant is going to be smaller. So if we take out a 1 sixth, then we're going to make that even smaller. So we have to make our determinant of b equal to a in the end. But what we've done here is we've divided this matrix by 6. So we have to compensate by multiplying the determinant by 6. Okay, so at this point, now we're going to get 6 times the determinant of 1, 5, negative 3, 0, negative 3, 2, 0, 3, negative 1. Okay, so now what should we do? Well, let's do some more row replacement. Let's take the second row and add the third row to it. So 1, 5, negative 3, 0, okay, negative 3 plus 3 is 0, 2 plus negative 1 is 1, and we have 0, 3, 1. Oh, well, we know that we can get the determinant by taking all of the products of the diagonals, but this needs to be a 0, this 3, so let's do some row swapping here. Let's swap the second and third row. Okay, so there's the 6, 1, 5, negative 3, so let's swap the second and third row. So 0, 3, 1, and 0, 0, 1. Are we done yet? No. We swapped a row, so we have to multiply this by negative 1. Okay, so now we have a matrix in triangular form, so we can take its determinant. It's going to be negative 6 times the product of the diagonal entries. So this will be 1 times 3 times 1, which means our determinant is negative 18. So you can check this yourself. You can take a look at this original matrix, and you can compute it the old-fashioned way, and you'll find that the determinant is negative 18. Just to be sure, I did put this into a determinant solver online, just to double check. That is the case. In fact, determinant solvers are really easy to find online. They're really easy to use. You just put in the numbers in the matrix, and it computes the determinant. It even gives you the steps for these, if you want them. It might do them differently than how you would, but you can keep track of the determinants, and you can just see how it goes. So Google Determinant Solver, the first one you find is going to be fantastic, if you need it. Of course, you don't get that on exams, so make sure you know how to do it by hand. Okay, two, two more properties here. The determinant of A is equal to the determinant of A transpose. Okay, so why is this? Let's think about this. This is no formal proof, but I just want to think of some, mat some matrices in triangular form. So here we have it. We have A11, A12, A13. Okay, so in one case here, we have some numbers x in this corner, but the rest are in triangular form. So we know that the determinant is going to be the product of the diagonals. Okay, so let's take the transpose of this. Well, in the transpose, the zeros are up here, and the x's are down here. Now this is in lower triangular form, and if it's in lower triangular form, the determinant is the product of the diagonal entries. Therefore the determinants are the same. So this isn't how you prove it. What you do do is you prove it by induction. So you start off with a 2x2 two two matrix, and you show the base case holds, and then what you assume is you have a matrix that looks like this. So you have a bunch of entries here, and then these are a bunch of zeros. And you say, okay, so assume that the determinant here is the product of all the diagonal entries. So that's your determinant. Then what you do is say, okay, this was originally n by n, but I want to make this n plus 1 in both directions. So now you have this extra row here. So you have a new entry down there. The rest of these are zeros because it's in triangular form. And then the rest of up here are numbers. So all of these are numbers. So now what you need to prove is that the determinant of the whole thing is this times the determinant of this. And using cofactor expansion, you'll be able to find that the new determinant of this bigger matrix is still just the product of the diagonal entries. So I won't do that formally, but uh, that is the proof visually and you pretty much just need to convert it to mathematical notation. Okay, that's the first property. Uh, the second property, which I won't explain in detail at all, is that the determinant of a times b is equal to the determinant of a times the determinant of b. Uh, what you could do 
is you can take two two by two matrices and you can multiply them out and you can show that that's true for the two by two case and then you can generalize it further. So anyways, with that being said, let's show that the second property holds in an example. So we're gonna verify this. So first what we'll do is we're gonna say, okay, this is our matrix A, this is our matrix B. Let's find the determinant of A and the determinant of B on their own. Okay, so three, zero, six, one, and five, four, two, zero. Well, the determinant of A is going to be three times one minus zero, that's three. Determinant of B is going to be five times zero, which is zero minus four times two, it's negative eight. Which means that if this is true, then the determinant of AB is going to be three times negative eight, which is negative 24. So let's do some matrix multiplication. So three, zero, six, one times five, four, two, oh. Okay, well, this is going to be, we're gonna do this pretty quick. So first row times first column, this is 15 plus zero. First row times second column, that's going to be 12 plus zero. Second row times first column, that is going to be 30 plus two. So we're going to get 32. Second row times second column is going to be 24 plus zero, that's 24. Let's take the determinant of this. So the determinant of the matrix AB, well, this is 15 times 24, so it's gonna be 360. Then we're going to subtract 12 times 32, and 12 times 32 is 384. So 360 minus 384 is just negative 24. So we've confirmed that the two are equivalent. Of course, once again, this is not a proof. I'm just showing you with an example that this does hold. Okay, so that's it for properties of determinants. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do the best that I can to answer them.